Based on the French comic of the same name by Bastien Vivas and Balak, and also drawn by Bastien Vivas and Michael Sanleville, I apologize if I butchered that, uh, English is definitely my only language. Last Man is an action-packed cursed tune with conspiracy-ridden mysteries and well-developed characters. Oh yeah, it also has monsters, body horror, and trauma too, but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. The show follows a boxer named Richard who doesn't take anything seriously but is always in serious trouble. His mentor, who is also his best friend, which <laughs> really tells you a lot about his social life, is one of the best boxers around named Dave. Dave is basically Richard's father figure, getting him jobs, letting him stay at the gym rent free, and cleaning up after all of the stupid things he gets himself into. One day after Richard punches the wrong dirt bag, You can take care of yourself? It's not that complicated. Just follow the three P's and you'll be fine. Three P's? Put a cork in it, keep your paws off the dancers, and punch your sh out of any douchebag who gives him a hard time. Got it? Yeah, I think I got it. Good. Hey! Get your lazy ass over here! You look like Dog die. You think customers want to pay to watch you soak up there? I'm sorry, my son is in the hospital and I- ah! Who gives it? I suggest you come to my office after your shift and convince me as to why I shouldn't fire you. Do we understand each other? Yes, sir. Then get back to work. Now, what was I talking about? Uh, well, punch the douchebags. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Oh! Dave gets kidnapped, and by the time everything settles down, Richard has to not only learn to take care of himself, but also a little girl named Siri. By take care of, I obviously mean protect her from superhuman monster people. That was obvious, right? No? Well, that's where the mystery comes in at. Each episode, aside from a few, follow a Monster of the Week formula as Richard and whatever allies he meets along the way have to track down and kill these monsters before they do the same. Hunting the Hunters One of these allies is Dave's brother Howard, a gunslinging genius that carries the list of the people we're hunting, as well as the medicine that Siri needs. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Siri isn't just a young girl. She's afflicted with a mysterious illness that causes her to have a myriad of symptoms. Some include hallucinations, premonitions, convulsions, loss of consciousness, and her heart completely stopping. With the only medicine she needs for that being a black liquid in a vial that only Howard can make? Kinda sus. Instead of letting her illness define her as a burden though, she uses her premonitions and her unwavering resolve to be a valuable member of the team, doing whatever she can to not have to lose anyone else, even at the cost of herself, literally and figuratively. Her relationship with Richard is undoubtedly the most important one in the series. They have a father-daughter relationship that is shown internally as well as externally. From the two of them going to an arcade to both of them being in different places and different scenarios and yet using each other as a crush to survive. Richard remembering why he now has a reason to fight, which is her, and her fighting long enough for him to save her because she believes he will, is a prime example of the relationship they have. He wants her to grow up and have a normal life, and she just wants him to be there as she does. Wholesome. She's not the only girl in his life though, since after some coincidences and good timing, he eventually strikes up a friendship with a singer named Tommy Katana. Tommy... Tommy... Tommy Katana? With a singer named Tommy Katana. Tommy starts the series taking a lot of crap, not really sticking up for herself and feeling like a gold digging punchline at times. Which is why I'm surprised to say that she actually grew into a really strong character. She wasn't handed her fame, she had to earn it. Which she proves to everyone including herself with a really emotional performance in the most unlikely of places. The French and English VAs both nailed that performance and I'm beyond proud of them. To avoid spoilers, I can't say much else, which means that, sadly, I have to step away from the warm and fuzzy to the scorned and uglies, because we have to talk about the horror of this show. The monsters are terrifying, physically. There are some major powerhouses, but it's their sick and twisted minds that truly demand fear. Whether they are trapping people in a reality where they are happiest, while draining them dry of their actual life, or forcing them into a twisted, man-made art piece that would make even the human centipede creators cringe, it definitely isn't for the faint of heart. It's these grotesque scenes though that are oddly captivating, and the animation goes hard every single time.
which, I mean, to be fair, the animation is honestly always good, stylistic, and easy to watch. I really dug the art style, which makes me feel so stupid for turning it off last year saying, huh, that looks weird, it isn't for me. Beyond those monsters though, there are other ones. The mobsters I named earlier, save for a few, fall into that category. The head honcho, the Holy Father, is one of the more sympathetic ones. Yes, he takes knees for late fees, but he follows a set of rules and is respectful to others that do the same. He shows this when Howard calls Dave right before Dave is about to fight for him. What's it all? You no sleep a good? It's just something with my brother. It's complicated. Ah, oh, family's always complicated. But there's really nothing more important, is there? And then later when his men want to hunt Dave down to... You'll teach Mackenzie to show respect. Drop it, Jean-Michel. Familia. It's a complicated. As well as when he is willing to help out Richard when he cries over a story that he says... It words ever touched my soul. And now I regret being so harsh with my best friend. If you can't tell, he's one of my favorite characters. His family, though, doesn't have that same honor. The one we saw get punched out earlier, Harry, thinks all girls need his love, even against their will. Yeah, <laughs> you probably know what I mean. He's pretty minor, but knowing how awful he is, leaves a sick taste in your mouth when he's holding any amount of power. That being said, Father is a son that I hate more named Milo, that is just absolute scum of a person. It's debatable who is worse, but there's no debate on who I hate most. They own and mistreat women, sell drugs, put out hits, lend money to people that can't pay it back, hold illegal fight clubs. Oh shoot, crap, I forgot the first rule. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. And practically anything else you can possibly imagine. Their crimes are straightforward compared to the final trifecta of enemies are practically the Illuminati. They know about the monsters and about Siri hunting the latter. They are led by this guy, Rizel, kind of like uh, Lex Luthor mixed with Lelouch. He does his evil deeds in the shadows demanding respect but nobody really knows much about him. He recruits members like it's a cult and expects blind loyalty from them, using them like pawns on a chessboard, even if he's the most powerful among them. Stepping in with his powers when absolutely necessary, zapping the life out of anyone that gets in his way, he remains mysterious to the viewer as well, making him especially frightening. All these different enemies is where the show does have one flaw. It feels a bit rushed, and there's not enough time dedicated to each of them. That being said, the action scenes that we get are beyond solid. And the enemies are shown to be menacing without seeming hammy right off the bat, so it helps it flow together pretty well. Each episode is rather short, and I do wish that they had more time to delve into the more psychological aspects, because some of those monsters can get really deep and have some really emotional and impactful storylines, and they do, but I would have liked a few more. But beyond that, I am truly glad that this show exists to begin with, so thank you to everyone that worked on last man from the talented voice cast to the amazing animators and to the rest of you i hope that this becomes the best cursed tune that you've ever seen if you decide to uh give it a watch or well pretty close anyway and thank you so much for watching it seriously means a lot especially since this isn't the transformers content that a lot of people subscribed for above all else though i hope you have a great day thank you so it goes my worries start to bleed To the stars To infinity So it goes My worries start to bleed To the stars